So I absolutely love the look of the side pipes. You know, it's iconic. It's kind of one of the things that you that you attach to this car when you think about it. But uh, I'm not going in that direction because even more than the look of the side pipes, I like the look without side pipes. Uh, the simpler, kind of cleaner exterior lines. And also I'm a big fan of not having to step around those when you get in or out of the car each time. So instead, I'm gonna be placing the muffler uh, in the nose of the car. And I, I'm, I'm sure this has been done. I, I haven't seen it done, um, but that's what's leading me to actually build my own muffler. And it's gonna be very specific to that location there. And like I said, I have a little bit of experience in this part of the game, but not much. Um, I've got the heat management worked out. I'm, I'm fairly confident in that. But uh, a few other tricks. Um, the, in terms of the way the exhaust is going to vent, it's actually going to vent out of the factory location. So that's where the exhaust is going to vent, but it is not going to be a side pipe. It's simply going to be the, uh, an exhaust tip that exits there. So, you know, again, it's solving that those two problems for me, keeping uh, clean lines, um, not having to step over a hot, a hot exhaust side pipe, uh, allowing me to vent some creativity, which is always kind of fun. Uh, and I'm not sacrificing any ground clearance. That was another big part of this for me. You know, I, I, I live in Maine and uh, roads aren't great. Just getting it out of my driveway is gonna be a challenge. And at a ride height of what, four and a half inches. Biting into that in any way is gonna prove uh, really problematic for me. So this gets me out of that hole as well. So with that said, let's, uh, let's kick this thing off. I'm gonna start by building a template, a um, couple of templates here to mock up, and, uh, mock up um, uh, a couple of shapes to make sure that my design fits where it's supposed to. And then we'll start cutting some stainless steel. Here we go. Before I start building this thing, I thought it'd help to throw a quick picture of a CAD drawing I did. Um, took some rough measurements and drew this up um, just to kind of wrap my head around the design, give me a, a little bit of a starting point before I made the templates. Also thought this image might help um, you all kind of see what I'm going to be building here. Might, um, might help make sense of some of the stuff coming up. Ah yes, my poor man's uh, plasma cutter. Be nice to have one of those. Uh, so here, this is a, the first step into bending the some of the parts to this muffler. The um, what I'm bending here is the top shell, or basically the top half of the muffler. This is uh, all out of 16 gauge stainless steel, which doesn't like to bend, especially when I'm using this small handbrake. Uh, um, this thing is uh, it's just a Harbor Freight. 30 inch unit, I think, but it works great. I definitely stressed it in this situation. Uh, in some cases, you'll see me kind of uh, pre-score some of the steel. 
and that helps make the bends a little crisper, but uh, definitely 16 gauge limit here. Once I finished the outer shell of the muffler, I was able to kind of hold it in place in the car. I didn't unfortunately catch any of this on film, but uh, I had to put, the, put it in place in the car and then come up with the X-pipe design. So I had to go right, right to building the X-pipe because the X-pipe uh, bolts right to the front of the muffler. And I would, wouldn't be able to actually weld up any of the internals if I didn't know exactly how that X-pipe was going to mate um, to the front of this thing. So. Paused on the muffler, working on the X-pipe now. It's my first X-pipe. Um, I hope it's my last. <laughs> not, uh, not the easiest thing to build. Uh, so once this is done, I can then kind of transition back into starting to build the baffles on the inside of the muffler.
So I got the pieces rough cut. Uh, I, I obviously have a lot of grinding to do to, to get to where it needs to be in the end. But um, you can kind of get an idea of what this thing is starting to shape out to. Uh, I'm going to end up grinding these and, and they're pretty close now. I, you know, once I start clamping this, tack welding it, clamping it, uh, I'll be able to get all the joints nice and tight, but they're actually not that bad right now. Here's one of the kind of the baffle support, I guess you would call it. it sits in here, it supports the tubes that uh, crisscross this thing, and then the uh, back end of the muffler sits here like this. So uh, I, I did a flange on this one. Let me turn it so you can maybe see a little better here, but I did a flange on this one here uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it, it's going to be easier to weld it in place. I, I'm going to be in a kind of tight confines here and um, once the things kind of get assembled. So that'll help me get a good solid weld bead on it. It's easier to kind of overdo it, do a, a lap weld than it is a, a 90 degree butt weld. I don't know if that's what you call it. That's what I'm calling it. Um, but uh, the, the other thing this flange does here is it gives me something to screw the bottom cover to. So the, the bottom, there's gonna be an access cover here. And the idea is that uh, I'm going to be able to tune this thing. And, and uh, that, that was always a kind of a goal to, in the beginning is I really don't know how I want this thing to sound. So I'll be able to dial in at least some of the amplitude based on what I'm doing within this, within this muffler. And, and, the, and giving me access to this with this port um, will allow me to uh, either add or reduce damping. Um, I can even... Uh, I can actually even change uh, or add uh, baffles within the tubes too, if I, or, or I should say uh, perforations within the tube. So I'll be able to uh, at least have some controllable, um, some control over how it sounds. And I also, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the, really the whole reason for the X-pipe, uh, the whole reason for the X-pipe was to blend the right and left bank of cylinders. And uh, that does a couple things. It gets rid of some of the drone that you might hear, um, you know, highway speeds maybe, but it also uh, mellows the sound out a little bit. It gets rid of a little bit of the, the harshness. Um, both right and left notes are, are blended together. So uh, I, I, apparently there is some horsepower gain to be had. Uh, I'm not all that concerned about it. I didn't go with a big horsepower motor, so it wasn't really a, a goal of mine either. And I'm not hunting for every little last piece of horsepower as I build this, but I also don't want to make anything that's going to inhibit that. Uh, so the X-Pipe apparently um, through scavenging uh, improves, improves performance a little bit, but I'm mainly doing it for sound. So my next step is to grind, get these fitting really snugly. I want to do a minimum of clamping to get this part in place uh, and then uh, do a, a, a thorough cleaning. It's stainless steel. It's really sensitive to contaminants when you're welding it. Uh, and then tack this thing together. Um, I still got to make the the tubes uh, with the perforations in them, and I'll I'll go over that shortly. Hey, so I put a lot of thought in how to perforate the tubes for the baffle. Um, and uh, yeah, you can buy perforated tubes, but you know, where, where would the fun be there, right? Plus I have a lot of the stainless steel here. So I thought, um, kind of fall back on a trick that I um, had used in a previous project where I used a tile saw with a seven inch uh, abrasive metal cutting blade. Uh, the arbor sizes matches up perfectly and um, put just a little bit of water in the bottom of this thing so uh, any of the sparks that kind of pull down in um, self-extinguish but uh, this worked great and as you'll see I was able to cut these tubes um, pretty consistently uh, I have a little point that registers on the previous cut so as I as I proceed along the cuts the the cut distance or the distance between the cuts um, is is nice and consistent but um, yeah this thing worked out pretty well
whenever you're using an abrasive blade to cut steel, especially stainless steel, you always end up with that kind of ugly burr on the inside of the cut. Um, that, of course, is exactly what you don't want um, with anything that air is flowing through. So uh, thinking about that, I decided that I really needed to knock that, knock those down and make it as smooth as I could on the inside. So I used my lathe um, with some sandpaper tucked around a tube. Uh, felt a little uh, little makeshift, but worked out okay. And uh, again, did a finger count at the end and, and had all 10. So I call that a win. To allow for a little more energy to leave these um, curved tubes, I decided to put a dimple in every one of the, every other one of the little spaces left between these curves, just to give um, some of the sound energy a little more space to, to leave and, and, and um, find its way to the insulation inside the muffler. Getting ready to uh, finish up welding the, um, the baffles in place here, the through tubes, and you can see how they're gonna kind of go in place in the, the entrance part of the exhaust, and then the loop around in here, and then they come back out. One of the one of the issues that's challenging here is as soon as I put any type of profile or bends in these, they no longer pass cleanly through these holes, so I have to weld them in place. Um, which is not that easy because you know you're not welding at a comfortable angle for putting a flange on, but it's really the only option. Um, so these will go in, put a weld on them here, and uh, once everything's kind of um, once these flanges are in place, I can then insert all the parts together and do all the final welding. But it would be uh, certainly would be a lot easier to not have to have to do it this way. So this is this this is that point in in putting stuff on YouTube that you wonder ah, do I show it do I not show it ah, I don't know but uh, I figured I would and um, this is just kind of 
shows you um, where, you know, the, kind of the limits of my welding skills. Uh, I, I, uh, while I'm not going to blame my welder, I'm certainly going to give it some credit for the less than ideal looking welds. Uh, I, I, I was trained and, and learned on and used for years. Um, I had a, a much nicer welder. It was a, a TIG welder, had all sorts of fine control, um, pedal control, things like that. The welder I currently have, as my shop has been scaled down considerably, uh, the welder I currently have is far more basic. Uh, I have no fine control, um, so I have no pedal control, which is a real, real issue when you're welding some uh, thin-walled stainless steel, especially along some kind of complex shapes where you really need to be able to adjust the uh, intensity there. But okay, so enough of the disclaimer. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you the welds, um, and I think I've said this before. There are no cute YouTube beautiful welds here. Uh, but I have lots of confidence in these welds. They are, um, uh, there's plenty of penetration. There's probably more weld than there needs to be. I kind of did that intentionally. I'd love to say I don't care about the cosmetics because it, most of it's going to be hidden under heat shielding, but I do. Uh, I do care about the cosmetics. So I'm going to show you what I've done, um, kind of walk you through uh, why this muffler is shaped the way it is. Uh, and then uh, the next step is going to be to put it in the car temporarily and start to build the brackets that secure it, um, the hangers that secure it to the frame. So here's where we are. Uh, obviously it's a very unique shaped muffler. You can see why I, I didn't have an option for anything off the shelf. Um, uh, the, the recent addition to this muffler, and that was really part of the original plan, was to put this chamfer in the leading nose here, and that, that gives me uh, more space between it and the radiator. Uh, there's going to be copious amounts of heat shielding on this. I'm actually not all that concerned about heat, and I know that's the first thing that everybody's thinking about, and that's what I've, I've, uh, I've come to realize. Um, Heat management in these cars is a, is a pretty serious issue, but I am running a 302. I'm not running a big boy motor. Uh, you know, it's a it's a Ford Racing 302. Uh, not as likely to generate as much heat as some of the bigger engines. But um, I have all sorts of plans for heat management on this. There's going to be several layers, so this will be a relatively cool muffler. Uh, I, I'm not all that concerned with that part of it. Probably should be, but we'll see. Um, but uh, here's where we are. You can see my, my welds are not great. You know, they're, I'll kind of zoom in there. That's about as good as they're going to get. Uh, right there, I had some difficulty. Um, and then on this side, you can see um, where I'm going from very, the heavy V clamp material, which is, you know, 3 16 of an inch thick at some point. So I'm welding that to 16 gauge. Be really careful there not to get burned through. So I had to, I had to get a little funky there in some of the welds. But again, um, really robust. This thing is this thing's a little tank. Uh, you know, from a weight standpoint, I think I'm still less than where I would be if I were going to side pipes. But uh, yeah, so this is where we're at. Next step, like I said, is to get this mocked up in the car and start building some brackets that support this. Um, unit's going to essentially going to hang from here and on this side. Uh, again, this thing has to move and rotate with the engine. It's it's going to be um, you know not a lot of space between it and the headers. So as the motor rocks back and forth, this will too. Uh, next step: um, exhaust hangers. Well, here's the first bracket mocked up. The, uh, you know, the, I still have to trim the bolts to shape or to length, obviously. But uh, looks pretty good. Should be plenty robust enough. Um, the muffler doesn't weigh much. The muffler weighs about 20, uh, about 18 pounds, I think. Uh, maybe a little bit more once I get the baffling material in there. So not a lot of weight. But... Uh, yeah, it should be plenty strong enough. Um, I've got a decent separation between the the rubber and the 
muffler itself, I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with heat. Um, they're a high temp material. So there we have it. First bracket mocked up. Next step is to weld the brackets on top of the muffler. I think I might do a small brace, an additional brace too. So I'm pulling in a larger spot or a larger, more area of that muffler is supported that way. I think it might be safer. Well, now you can see why I needed to run my radiator line, radiator hose, in that manner because I needed to have space for my muffler. Um, it's tucked up underneath there. And uh, I just finished up the mounts, the hangers. They work great. Uh, it's nicely balanced in there. It kind of actually sits pretty neutral. It doesn't really pull to the front or the back. Um, the uh, those uh, rubber hangers provide enough swing, e you know, right and left and, and rotationally to accommodate the, you know, that big thing moving around. So there are a couple different parts to go into packing a muffler, um, at least the way I'm doing it here. There's uh, stainless steel wool and then there is the um, a ceramic fiber, that which is that white stuff. Uh, the, the two kind of work in concert with each other. So the, the the ceramic fiber is, is better at absorbing sound energy, but more fragile. So the stainless steel wool kind of wraps those those perforated tubes directly, and then the um, the ceramic uh, material goes up against the inside uh, walls of the muffler. Um, and this is tunable. You know, I'll, I'll be able to go back in and kind of adjust things as need be. Uh, and then uh, the last thing I'm doing here is I'm dropping the uh, bottle bottom panel in place and this is held in with a bunch of quarter 20 screws that um, uh, I welded from the inside so uh, the thread draw on the outside which I think is, is smarter to you know keep keep the heat away from the part that you're that you're um, screwing on and off and again this, this will allow me to you know kind of tweak this tweak the sound a little bit but also make this thing serviceable so uh, this is where I'm going to wrap up this terribly long video. Sorry, once again, I seem to get in the habit of, habit of making really long videos now. I'll try to shorten them, but this is part one of part two. Part two is the rest of the exhaust system, and that will be coming in the next couple of days. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, have a great one.